everybody. Welcome to the Field of Streams, where I, your host, Janine McRae, bring you the tiny thoughts that stream from my brain and present them to you as though they're a secret button that, when pressed, causes all leaf blowers in the vicinity to immediately cease operation during leaf blowing season, which seems to be all year now because apparently dust needs to move from driveway to driveway and back again on your street for balance to remain in this stupid leaf-blowing universe. Mmm, insanity. Now, folks, I can't promise you much with these annoyances, but I can promise you this. I will not keep you long. A promise like that deserves a follow, don't you think? Tap that follow button. Every time you do, a writer can put fuel in their vehicle. In case you missed it, or you're from a country where it's just any other day, it was Halloween last week. When I was a kid, I was always fascinated by the depiction of Halloween in American movies, because, I don't know if you can tell from the accent, I'm Australia, I was not born in this country. The whole trick-or-treat thing, it just didn't exist where I was, which admittedly was a sheep farm out in the sticks. And kids can't really hit the streets with a pumpkin bucket and a Batman costume and go knocking on a cocky's door. A cocky is an Australian term for a farmer, by the way. Anyway, when I first came to this country 20 years ago, it was just another one of those things I had to experience for myself so I could say, oh, so it's not just something they do in the movies. This is real. Now I get it. Like pie. I never understood the pie hype either. Now I get it. Oh boy, do I get it. This episode was initially inspired by talk of werewolves. Werewolves. Were werewolves. Werewolf? Anyway, a little video slid across my desk with a primer on the history of werewolves in folklore and how they came to be a thing that people were afeard of. It got me thinking about, this'll shock you, me. As a person who is an introvert with periods of extroversion, I'm sort of a werewolf, basically. Metaphorically. You know how I love metaphors. There's a parallel in there somewhere. Werewolves, darewolves, Halloween, Janine. There ought to be a way to come out of my introversion more regularly and have it not be a trick, but a treat. See what I did there? Mm, forget it. I shouldn't need a full moon for my extroversion to come out, for my wolf. And by moon, of course, I mean the rock in the sky, not other interpretations of the word moon, if you please. So now I invite you, dear listener, to kick back, relax, and close your eyes as I, in my best wolfing voice, read to you now a little story called The Wolf in me. The wolf in me has soft eyes, soft, wet, and all-seeing eyes that shift and glide across your landscapes, your faraways, your strongholds. This and that, and yes and no, wolf eyes that glass and glisten and narrow at the coming of a lie told by a suit straddling the bow of a foe-boat. Understand. With this comes a promise of attention sharper than fangs, surprise larger than Red Riding Hood appetites, an understanding wider than an uncocked jaw, a blink, a wink, and a roll. Suspicion is a pigment in my eye. The wolf in me is a patient hidden thing. Both introvert and extrovert, it shies in the noise and cries out in the quiet. A mute, a braggart. An introverted extrovert, it is the duality of the wolf. Destined to dig holes in the garden of my brain. Destined to deliver dinner to the table of my soul. Destined to wait and wait and moment surf and quiet riot and bring the inappropriate snarl at your simple christening. Hide, show, cower, rage. Patience is the fur I wear. The wolf in me howls long and strangled notes into the embrace of the darkest night. For joy, for release, for supper. This undocumented howl rises from a balled-up blanket in my heart and reaches out into the atmosphere, howling for injustice and pettiness and frustrated and meaningless actions. 
This is lament. This is reckoning. This is loneliness and placid love caught on a restless wind. The wolf howls at the yaw of it, the twisting anxiety in the lupine stomach, yearning to be truly known, but terrified of being truly known. Emotion is a self-inflicted bite I bear. The wolf in me circles at the edge of the meadow, protected by the thick and forgiving forest, stalking, pacing, resting on haunches to look across. The wolf sniffing the air, noting the battlements, making the plan. The watch of it, the scanning of fences for holes and ways in. The wolf cannot bullet a gate it. The wolf must opportunity knock. Leaping, bounding, salivating. Come out, come out, wherever you are. The wolf in me races across open spaces, wild grasses whipping at limbs and depositing ticks. Persistence is the tail I wag. The wolf in me is suppressed by the sheep, the comfort of the wool pulled over eyes, the fleece wrapped around sagging shoulders. Safety comes in numbers and bleats and flocks and meadow meanders to nowhere in particular. The fleece hides the twitching flesh, the sharp claws and the grinding teeth. The wolf in me is afraid of humans, has been hunted to the periphery of extinction. In my angst, the wolf in me retreats to the safety of the sheep. Fear is the mange I manage. The wolf in me comes out, bears teeth at the moment, spits saliva with a bark and bites wildly at the world. Claws scratch at doors, ears prick at the joy of it, and a body sings the yowl of the free. The wolf breathes in the icy air, walks towards the open fire, feels around for scraps of life, and trembles at the contact. This wolf. I am a dare wolf, heart hot in a shell, exploding on contact. I leap and bound from the cliffs of perception and into the open moor of the earth. It eats me in one bite. I am a share wolf, taking all my good and weird and wild and wary to leave paw prints on this canvas. It is on the wall with the dot of sold already. I am a care wolf, cuddling you to the tender of me, licking at your wounds and keeping guard against the day. It is the promise I swear to you. Body twisting inside to out, I will eviscerate this life to feast upon its bounty. The wolf, the wolf, this wolf in me. Courage is the poor I swipe. Put away those silver bullets. And there you have it, today's episode. I hope you'll come back for more Howlings at the Moon. These missives are designed to inspire creative folk to get out there and make something of their own. If you enjoyed what you heard, follow the podcast so that you never miss an episode and sign up to read my writing at janinemccrae.substack.com. But for now, I'll leave you with this. Love what you love, and I'll see you out there making stuff. <laughs>